making a Stuart model steam plant. This one is part 48, fitting the safety valve to the new Stuart Models 504 boiler and setting the valve to blow off at the correct pressure using compressed air. Before I start this episode, I have a very important statement. If you're working with miniature steam boilers before introducing any compressed air into them or even steam, they need to have previously been tested using water pressure. This is called a hydraulic test. Because this is a brand new boiler from Stuart Models, it came with a pressure test certificate, so it's OK. And the hydraulic pressure test was to twice the working pressure. This boiler is designed to work at £60 per square inch, so the hydraulic test was £120 per square inch. Later on in this video, I'm going to show a clip from a previous video where I overpressured a boiler to press out a serious dent in the side of the barrel. This is a brand new virgin boiler. It's never been steamed and it doesn't have any dents or damage to it. In this part of the clip, I'm about to fit the safety valve. When you're fitting safety valves, don't forget to fit a washer between the safety valve and the bush. Here's the safety valve firmly fitted in position, so now I can introduce some pressure into the boiler. You might find this next part quite useful. I didn't fit a union into the boiler bush, I just screwed in a piece of silicone rubber tubing. Some viewers may be thinking, well that's a very foolish idea, it's just going to blow out, but that is not so. Quite the reverse in fact, the air pressure within the piece of silicone rubber tubing expands it and presses the tubing against a thread in the bush and believe me, it is very airtight. And initially the silicone rubber tubing wasn't a very tight fit in the bush, I just thought I'd mention this as a useful tip. I'm starting off by allowing £25 per square inch into the boiler just to test all the connections and everything seems to be fine, the whistle blows, the birds are singing and the sun's come out. If you keep your eye on the pressure gauge you will see it start to rise as I pump more air into the boiler. I'm taking it up to 50 psi. Despite all my warnings about model steam boilers and pressure and saying things like never use compressed air or steam to pressurise an old steam boiler. Despite all my warnings about health and safety and pressure and pressure vessels, one viewer sent me a message. The question was something like, why don't you just use compressed air? I'm about to include a video clip from a previous video. The video shows a hydraulic test on a very old 500 series boiler. And one more time, you need to use water for testing boilers, or even oil I suppose, because it is non-compressible. If the boiler fails using water, you will just get wet. If the boiler fails using compressed air or steam, you will be seriously injured. The clip is taken from a video called How to Remove a Dent from a Model Steam Boiler. This is an experiment in removing a very serious dent in a small copper boiler barrel. Once the job is completed, I will raise the pressure to a very high level, just to show what happens. There are very small dents and marks in most of these boilers, but this one is especially bad. I've shown this in a previous episode. Heating the dented area of the boiler is called annealing, and this will soften the copper in the part marked with the cross. It is important to concentrate the heat in the damaged area, and not on any of the joints. I've screwed blanking plugs into all of the bushes, and this is my small boiler test rig. This next bit is important. You need to fully fill the boiler with water. There must be no air left inside whatsoever. I removed the main filler plug and fitted a funnel. I also raised the end of the boiler where I'd removed the blanking plug. All I need to do now is fill the boiler with water. I pumped the boiler up to 150 pounds per square inch. The 500 series boilers are designed to run at 60 pounds per square inch so really, the hydraulic test only needs to be 120 pounds per square inch. Watch what happens when I take the pressure higher than 150. As if by magic, the severe dent in the side of the boiler starts to disappear as the pressure increases. As you can see, there are still some marks on the boiler, but the major dent is gone. That was an old 500 boiler, this is the one that I'm currently working on, which is absolutely brand new and unused. Because this is a Stuart boiler, I fitted a Stuart safety valve, I personally do not like them. I don't like the noise that they make when they blow off, and I think they're a bit overscale and quite ugly. 
When I look back on my life, I can think of a few girlfriends in the past who also shared the same characteristics. As you can see, by slackening off the grub screw and using two spanners, one on the top hexagon and one on the middle hexagon, you can set the valve to apply more pressure to the spring inside. This in turn applies more pressure to the ball that sits over the hole. I've made a very coarse adjustment to the valve and here the pressure is at 75 pounds per square inch. This is quite safe because this boiler has had a hydraulic test to 120 pounds per square inch. The safety valve is obviously blowing off at this pressure. And I adjusted the top part and re-locked the ring in place so that the safety valve blew off just above 60 pounds per square inch. By blowing the whistle a few times, it dropped the pressure just enough to stop the safety valve from making that horrible noise, but it's still blowing off. I'm going to give it time to settle when I steam the boiler. When I open one of the steam valves, the pressure drops considerably on the pressure gauge. All I'm doing at the moment is checking for leaks and making sure that everything operates okay. Although the turret hasn't broken off the valve, I do think I'm going to fit a support underneath it, just in case. Belt and braces approach every time. And that concludes this episode. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.